Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This video is on the circulation dynamics. And in part one, we're going to talk about blood flow. Circulation doesn't really start or end anywhere, because it's a circle. But let's just assume it starts at the left ventricle. The left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood into the aorta, which then goes through the arteries and then the arterioles and the capillaries, where exchange takes place with tissues, and deoxygenated blood enters the venules and then the veins, and the veins all unite to join the vena cava to drain into the right atrium. So that's flow. It's the movement of blood through the vessels. But what decides which way it goes? Pressure. If the pressure throughout the system was the same, blood would just stagnate. What moves it is a pressure gradient. Blood flows from higher pressure to lower pressure. So there has to be a difference in pressure at two ends of the vessel for blood to flow from one end to the other. And that's the pressure gradient. During systole, when the ventricle contracts, blood from the left ventricle enters the aorta under high pressure. As blood flows through the arteries, the arterioles, and all the other vessels, the pressure reduces until it reaches the right atrium, which has the lowest pressure. The pressure gradient between the arteries and the veins is what guides flow. So flow is proportional to the pressure difference. But what opposes it? Resistance. Resistance is literally responsible for resisting flow. So it's inversely proportional. And flow is the change in pressure over resistance. Now usually blood flow is streamlined and it's called laminar flow. All the layers behave themselves and they stay at equal distances from each other. But the blood vessel wall isn't smooth. There's a lining with endothelial cells. Now that creates drag on the outer layers. So the layer in the center moves fast, while those towards the wall get held back. Now this creates friction on the cells, and that force is called shear stress. Now sometimes this orderly flow can get messed up, and they start moving in different directions. That is called turbulent flow. Laminar flow is quiet, but turbulent flow is noisy. Whether flow becomes turbulent or not is determined by something called Reynolds number. And that depends on the velocity at which the blood is flowing, the diameter of the vessel through which it's flowing, the density of the blood, and the viscosity of the blood. A higher Reynolds number means it's more likely there's turbulence. So higher velocity of flow a larger vessel diameter, more density of blood or lower viscosity means more turbulence. An example of turbulent flow is during blood pressure measurement. When the cuff pressure goes lower than the arterial pressure, you hear sounds, and that's from turbulence. When Reynolds number is under 2000, the flow is laminar. Over 2000, it becomes turbulent. Now, one of the factors was velocity, and the velocity of blood depends upon the flow and the cross-sectional area. The flow through circulation is the cardiac output, and if that's constant, the velocity is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. Overall, the capillaries have a high cross-sectional area because of lots of branching, so they have a high number, and so overall they have a low velocity. If a vessel constricts, its diameter reduces and the velocity increases. That can create turbulence in the vessel beyond the point of that constriction. So again, think of the Korotkov sounds. The velocity at which laminar flow becomes turbulent is called the critical velocity. Lower the viscosity, more the likelihood of turbulence. So in anemia, where the hematocrit is low, there's a lower viscosity of blood. So that's why they can have turbulence and develop functional murmurs. So what makes blood move through the vessels is the change in pressure. And what opposes it is the resistance. And in part two, we're going to go over resistance. And that is some stuff on flow and circulation dynamics. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.